Alright guys, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. It's me, the Blood Gamer, of course. In the last episode, we did some side quests after we finished up the Fire Temple. In this episode, we're going to do some more side quests and work our way uh, to the Zora's Domain. Now, if you take that magic bean plant, uh, you can get on this platform fairly easily, and you can destroy this gold sculpture hanging on the wall. Alternately, if you do not have the magic bean plant uh, planted, you can go up halfway or halfway up the river and take this ladder by jumping down to it. Uh, unlike young Link who swims when he's in the river, uh, adult Link or whatever you want to call him, grown-up Link, I don't really care, um, will uh, be able to stand in the river as opposed to swim downstream very rapidly. Uh, so that is a tip you may want to keep in mind. Um, there is one more gold sculptula on the Zora's River. Uh, it's about to turn daytime, but I might be able to get it. Uh, I'm going to take out my arrows really quickly so I can get it. That way I don't have to stress. Never mind. <laughs> so you're going to want to come up here along the river. It's about three quarters of the way up the river. Uh, to where the fencing starts appearing on this uh, bridge. Um, and right here will be a gold sculptula. Uh, it, the hookshot target won't light up red, but you, you still have. Um, you're still able to get the gold sculptula. I don't know why it does that. Alright, so that is the last of the sculptulas here on the Zora's River. And. Um, yeah, so that's nice to get that out of the way as well. So now we're going to want to play Zelda's Lullaby so we can enter the domain. Now we're in the Zora's Domain. It's still one of my favorite areas of the game, um, even though it's completely frozen over and it's snowing inside a cave, which I don't know how it's even possible, but it is. I don't know if you saw it there, but by the waterfall, or what used to be a waterfall and is now a giant uh, icicle, there was a gold sculptula, so we're going to want to go grab that really quickly. Um, you're going to want to be careful when you get near the waterfall because you will slide around you, because of ice physics. So edge your way as close as you can to the edge and then aim to get the Sculptula. And we got the only gold Sculptula within the Zora's Domain, which is really nice to get out of the way uh, because that's another one that people can miss very easily. Now if you look up here, the Zora King is frozen but he's frozen in red ice, which in most cases, in video games especially, it's either blue or clear. So this must be some kind of magic ice that can only be melted in unconventional ways. Uh, maybe we have to cast a magic spell, or maybe we'll have to find something that's kind of mystical, but either way, um, we'll have to find an alternate way to defrost him. Uh, as you can tell, at Lord Jabi Jabi's altar, there is no longer, um, there is no longer, uh, he's no longer there, excuse me. Um, it makes me wonder if that giant block of ice right behind his altar is what, uh, is where he is, but, um, unfortunately with the N64 graphical limitations, they couldn't actually, like, show that he was frozen in ice underwater or something. Anyway, if you walk across these, um, icebergs, uh, and jump very carefully, you can get this piece of heart just floating out here. Um, it is very worth your time because it is not hard to get at all. Uh, if you fall in the water, uh, and fall off of these icebergs, you will have to, uh, swim around back to the altar and jump back across because there's no way to climb back up onto them. Um, these are spinning, but they honestly don't really do anything. I mean, they're just as easy to jump across as the ones that stand still, so it's no big deal. So now we want to enter this big tunnel. And we're in the ice cavern. There's some more of that red ice, so maybe we find what we need right in here. Um, the 
the Ice Cavern to me is a very interesting mini dungeon. It's wow. one of the first. Uh, it's one of the first. It's one of the two that are in this uh, game. Uh, sometimes some people will consider th that there are three mini dungeons, but I only consider uh, two of them as being mini dungeons. Um, these ice sculptures are called freeze arts, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And they take three whacks with the Master Sword to kill. Uh, if you do not destroy them, they will freeze you. But in this room, they're required to be destroyed so that you can progress within the uh, mini dungeon. Now, like I was saying, I almost wish that this was a full-fledged temple. Um, because if you look at the quest status uh, subscreen, you know, you see that we have the light medallion, the forest medallion, the fire medallion, and we're also going to get, you know, water, uh, shadow, and spirit. So it's like they have all of the elements that are, you know, that could, well, all of the possible, you know, elements that people could consider in this game, with the exception of ice, uh, air or wind, and earth. And it almost makes me wonder, you know, wish that they, like, fleshed out the ice, uh, the ice cavern a bit more and made it, like, a full-fledged temple instead of, like, you know, a 10 or 15 minute mini dungeon. But, you know, the game's already out, so you can't really change anything about it. And I failed miserably by missing that silver rupee. And there is a gold sculpture up on that wall, but I will be getting that later. Alright, so... In this case, you need to collect all five silver rupees so that you can open up a door, which introduces, you know, the silver rupee puzzle. Uh, it is a somewhat good source of, uh, uh, rupees because it will give you five rupees per, um silver rupee, so it is, uh, if you are in an emergency and need rupees, I guess it's worth your time, because it gives you 25, but there are way better ways to, uh, get rupees than collecting silver, um, rupees. So these are ice keys, of course, and I can't stand these, because they freeze you. Um, so there's one more that I'm going to want to get at, well... He hit me, but I'm going to get rid of him right there. So arrows do not affect Freezards, unfortunately. But, uh, I almost got, I almost killed it right there. There is one more fire key that I'm going to want to grab real quick. Not grab, just destroy. Come here, Kesey Kesey. There we go. Alright, so one thing you can do with the Freezards is you can actually hookshot to them. Um, because they're so heavy and they're stuck in place. So after they breathe their frost breath, you're going to want to hookshot to them, and um, then you can start slashing them. I got those hearts over there because I did not want to die. This blue fire, it doesn't seem natural. Maybe you can use it for something. Well, we've seen red ice everywhere, and usually when you melt blue ice, you use red or orange fire to do it. So maybe that's a hint that we need to use a blue fire to melt red ice. Um, which is a cool concept, because it's like, whenever you melt something or do something like that, you don't think of the color. You always think of, oh, well, fire melts ice, and you know, you know, water conducts electricity, but you don't ever think, you know, like, oh, blue fire will melt red ice, and, you know, something like that. So I think Nintendo was pretty genius on, um, reversing it. Alright, so now we can melt, uh, the ice, um, anytime that we want to. And then here will be a very convenient item.
And in here we have the dungeon map. Alright, so, like I said, it, it's actually a mini dungeon, but there is um, a dungeon map to help those who get lost easily. Um, so, like I said, I really... Oh, huge rupee that I'm gonna miss! Please let me get it. Please let me get it. No! Ah, uh, oh well. Uh, maybe if I leave and re-enter it'll come back, but I'm not really, uh, distraught by not getting it. I think that's worth 100 rupees. Um, or maybe it's worth 50 rupees and it's just pink, because sometimes they do that, like, in Majora's Mask there's two huge rupees that give 100 rupees, or something like that. Um, it's just kind of really weird how sometimes it gives, you know, 100 rupees, and other times it gives, you know, 50 rupees, the same as another gem. Anyway, so we have uh, Blue Fire again, which is nice. So we have nowhere else we can advance in that room, so now we have to backtrack. So get rid of that Freezard, even though we're not coming back to this room. And now we gotta go back to the spinning blade room. Now over here is the route that we need to go, uh, but on the other side of the room is the route where we want to go next to get some extra items. So watch the ice blade. The best thing to do is stick towards the inside of the uh, blade. That way it's easier for you to not get hit. But if you can't do it, then that's okay too. And in here, we have another blue fire torch, so we don't have to backtrack all the way uh, to that oddly shaped room just to get some blue fire, which is very convenient considering the fact that uh, sometimes it's hard to platform in Zelda games. So, right over here is a piece of heart. Very worth your time to get if you uh, look this way. And if you can't hear, there's also a gold sculptula, which is right up here. Golly, the icicle hit me. But here's our first gold sculptula in the ice cavern. There's three total. There's also that one by the spinning blade, which I will get next. Get rid of these keys so that they don't get in the way. And right here is a treasure chest. which contains a compass. This way we can look at all the treasures in the dungeon. But there's only like one more left, so it's kind of <laughs> pointless at this point unless you get it first, because then it'll tell you, you know, you need this or that. Or this is where you need to go to get this or that, is what I meant to say. So, like always, you're going to want to refill your jars, uh, or bottles, excuse me, with, um, blue fire, just so that uh, we have some backup in case it's needed. I excuse me, had a hiccup. I really recommend bringing at least two empty bottles for this uh, mini dungeon. That way, um, you don't always have to go back and get more fire. Uh, so I always suggest entering here with at least two empty bottles. Alright, so now we can enter this room right over here. And in here, we have a Silver Rupee and Ice Block moving puzzle. So, to save some time, I'm going to uh, speed up this process. Um, just so that you guys can know the puzzle solution, and um, so I, I'm not cutting that out. And it'll allow me to get rid of these keys and get all the sil Silver Rupees without, you know, wasting a lot of your time. Also, one thing I'm going to grab really quickly is this gold sculpture, and this is the last one in this uh, dungeon. The mini dungeon, I should say. Alright, 
So, now that we have all five silver rupees, we can progress further in the tunnel. At this point, you won't need uh, another... Uh, you, you won't need more than one uh, blue fire, so I don't suggest um, going and getting that blue fire and that torch over there unless you feel like resetting the puzzle or you only have one bottle. Uh, what you want to do here is place it in the center so that it will melt all three uh, red ice. And here will be some hearts, which is always nice. We have a mini boss, the White Wolfos. Uh, what you want to do, like regular Wolfos, is let them attack and then jump attack them once they've uh, turned around. And we get the iron boots. So heavy you can't run. So heavy you can't float. We meet again, Link. If you came here to meet the Zoras, you wasted your time. This is all there is. With one exception, the Zoras are now sealed under this thick ice sheet. I managed to rescue the Zora princess from under the ice, but she left to head for the water temple. This ice is created by an evil curse. The monster in the water temple is the source of the curse. Unless you shut off the source, this ice will never melt. If you have courage enough to confront the danger and save the Zoras, I will teach you the melody that leads to the temple. Time passes, people move, like a river's flow, it never ends. A childish mind will turn to noble ambition, young love will turn, or will become deep affection, the clear water's surface reflects growth. Now listen to the serenade of water to reflect upon yourself. You have learned the serenade of water. Link, I'll see you again. Alright, so we got the iron boots. Uh, one unfortunate thing about the iron boots is that you have to go to the equipment subscreen every single time you want to equip them, unlike Wind Waker and the 3DS version, which will allow you to put it on a usable button. Now, if you notice, if you wear the iron boots, you start choking, and you only have a minute underwater before you drown, which is not fun. So what I'm going to do is go refill my blue fire really quickly, and I will meet you outside of the ice cavern. Alright guys, once you head outside the ice cavern, you're going to want to equip your iron boots immediately. Um, and just jump in the water and sink like a stone. Now, alternately, you can do this after you have an equipment, uh, an, equ an equip item that will help you um, breathe longer underwater. But, um, it's you get a full minute underwater. Uh, I think I had a little bit less because my health wasn't full. But, you know, it, it's, it's worth your time just to jump down here and uh, grab that heart uh, piece. Because, you know, the more health you have, the better. Now, you have plenty of time to get back up to the surface, so don't let that timer freak you out. Now, uh, because it'll take about ten seconds for me to get back up to the top, I'm going to meet you inside the Zora's River by the Zora King. Alright, so upon re-entering the Zora's Domain, you're now going to want to defrost the Zora King. Hopefully you won't have to spend an hour moving two feet. And 
now we are going to want to talk to him. Oh, I've come back to life. Was it you who saved me? Don't be nervous. It looks like you have a hard time breathing underwater. As an expression of my gratitude, I grant you this, tunic. With this, you won't choke underwater. And we get the Zora tunic. This diving suit is adult size, so it won't fit a kid. Wear it, and you won't drown underwater. Alright, so this will allow us uh, to have the iron boots on underwater without drowning. Um, it doesn't allow you to drive, dive deeper, unfortunately, but it is very worth your time to get it for free. Alternately, if you wish to buy it as a kid or after you open up the Zora shop uh, by melting the red ice with blue fire, you can buy it there for probably like 40 or 50 rupees, I think. Uh, but if you can get it for free, why not, you know, get it for free? Um, one thing I want to mention is that I did go back and get that huge rupee in the jar that I missed, and it was worth 50 rupees. So it's not really worth your time if you don't need more than 50 rupees. Um, anyway, I think that's about all the time we have for this episode, guys. In the next episode, we'll play the Serenade of Water and enter the Water Temple. This is the Blade Gamer. See you next time.